Spring practice is in the books. You should feel good about whoever wins the quarterback battle. You should be more concerned about who takes over a cornerback than quarterback. And you should also feel good about the running back position. I'll explain why you should think all of this on today's edition of Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. We are free and available everywhere you get your podcast. Alex Frank here with you on this Monday, April the 18th of 2022. Spring practice is officially in the books. We head now into the stretch where there's not, I mean, I'm not sure how much news there's going to be. This is my first time around in offseason covering the Bearcats for a uh, a feed like Locked On, the Locked On Podcast Network. So, we're going to see how much news is going to happen surrounding the football team as we head into the summer months, into fall camp, basketball. There's some news on that. That's going to be on tomorrow's show. Uh, the Bearcats landing another transfer, and I like it. We'll get into that tomorrow. But today's all about football. And spring practice is in the books, 15 practices down, and there's no separation in the quarterback battle. That's not shocking. Uh, we knew that... It was going to be a battle into the summer months. We knew that this was going to be a battle that carried on. I mean, heck, it could carry on the week before the season starts. I mean, heck, we may not know if if, if they really want to do it, prolong it. It could be a situation like Ohio State in 2015 where they concealed who was going to start a quarterback until the first possession of their first game. If the Bearcats want to do it that way, that's all fine. But I, I think we're going to know before then. And whoever is the starting quarterback, I think you have to feel good about it. I am not concerned about the quarterback position this year. In a year where there's going to be a lot of replacing from last year's incredible team, one position I think you don't have to worry about is quarterback. It's because of the experience or the upside and versatility that Ben Bryant and Evan Prater bring to this team. I don't think you can go wrong either way. I've said who I want to who I want the starting quarterback to be. I said who I would choose as my starter, and you've heard Russ Heltman on this show agree with me. But even if the Bearcats go with Ben Bryant, is that a bad thing? If they go with Ben Bryant, what that would give you is a what that would give you is a feeling of familiarity and a feeling of comfortability because he's been he's been there before. You know what he can do. So I believe that whoever takes over, sorry, I believe whoever takes over at quarterback is going to lead this team to at least a nine and three record, if not eight and four. This is, however, uncharted territory for Luke Fickle. Because this is his first time really having to, you know, replace a quarterback in his head coaching career. This is uncharted. This is a feeling of weirdness for Fickle, for you, and for the program. And by you, I mean the fans. Because the last four years, you're used to seeing Desmond Ritter trot out onto the field and take the snaps for Cincinnati. You're not going to see that this year. Even in last year's season which felt like uncharted territory. There was that constant of Desmond Ritter was still there. It felt like Desmond Ritter was a, was at the University of Cincinnati for 20 years. 20 years! So here we are, and we're, there's going to be a new quarterback. But what's so unique is, this is a program that just became the first ever group of five team to make the college football playoff, and now you're going to be not having to worry about who your quarterback's going to be. You just made the playoff. Your quarterback, who was here for four years, is now heading to the NFL, and you're not worried about who's going to be a quarterback? That's rare. That's unique. And you should be thankful for that. With Evan Prater, you're going to feel like anything is possible. With Ben Bryant, at least it gives you some comfortability, some familiarity. And you also realize, okay, we know Evan Prater's waiting in the wings. So if Bryant struggles... We can just go to Evan Prater. 
And think about the experience that both of these guys have. Bryant has a full season of starting under his belt. Be, uh, Evan Prater backed up Desmond Ritter for two years when Ritter was leading the Bearcats to back-to-back conference championships when Ritter was in the national spotlight last year. So, And Evan Prater didn't get a lot of coverage outside of a sports center top 10 play. But what he did get was experience. And if he can duplicate what Ritter did, and I don't know if he's going to do that, but he's going to put himself in the, in the national discussion. There is a lot to like about this quarterback battle because you cannot go wrong. If this was one of those where you have to get it right, there'd be a lot more pressure. But it doesn't feel like to me that this is a situation where you have to get it right. You have to get whoever starts a quarterback right or else the whole season could blow up right in front of your face. I don't think it's going to be that way. Because both of these guys, despite not having a ton of playing experience, they have a lot of experience in general. It's a matter of what of which quarterback's experience is going to benefit the most in this battle. This is going to be a battle. All the way until the start of the season. But to have a new quarterback for the first time in four years, yes, is going to feel weird. It is. This offseason already feels weird. But it feels weird in a good way. And you can feel good about it knowing that whoever takes over a quarterback, the game's most important position, you can feel good about that they are going to lead this team back to where they've been, which is, you know, playing for conference championships. I'm not saying this team is going to make the playoff, although I, I still ambitiously think they can. Realistically, I think this team can at least contend for a conference championship, and we'll see what happens if they're able to do that. Up next, uh, uh, you should definitely be concerned about the back, the corner back position. I'll explain why next. But first, I need to tell you about Built Bar because this is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions. Not this year, though. I'm sticking to it and eating right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. And have you tried the puffs? Well, if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. They're the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. That sounds so good. Those These are going to be your new favorite. The Puffs, like all Built Bars, are covered in 100% real chocolate. 100% real chocolate. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first. I don't know how, but they pull it off every time because then they figure out how to make it healthy. Go to build.com and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, as we close in on the NFL draft, big announcement because starting Thursday, April 28th, tune into the Lockdown NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and Locked On NFL's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Scott Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show all week leading up to the first pick. Locked On NFL Draft Live will be locked on, will be on the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube page April 28th, 29th, and 30th. Odyssey NFL Mock Draft will be on the Odyssey and Locked on NFL Draft podcast feeds all through this week and next Monday. We are getting ready for draft season. The Bearcats are going to be a prime focus of this year's draft. Nine players potentially going to be selected, including the first Bearcat who will be taken off the board, no doubt, Sauce Gardner. I've seen a, a mock draft where he's going number two to the Detroit Lions. I've seen a lot of drafts where he's going in the top ten. How great. Sauce Gardner, now a consensus top 10 pick, hailing from the University of Cincinnati. But whoever replaces Sauce Gardner, that's a, that's a concern you need to have. That's a concern that is rational. That's a concern that is legitimate. That's a concern that is warranted. Because whoever does replace Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, you're not, you don't know what to expect. It has the feeling of you're falling off a cliff. It really does. Because you don't know who you're going to next. It was different when you went from Michael Warren to Jared Dokes. It was different when you went from Jared Dokes to Jerome Ford. You knew what you had. 
it was different when you went from Marquise Copeland, Kamani Fitz, and uh, Cortez Broughton to the likes of uh, Malik Van and Elijah Ponder and Curtis Brooks along the defensive line. This is not like that because you're replacing two All-Americans, one who was so dominant in his college career that he was perfect in the sense that he did not allow a touchdown in his collegiate career. Think about that for a minute. Now you're going to have to replace those guys. This is a this is a position where you should be concerned. You should be concerned about who you're going to about who's going to play. Todd Bumpus, Arquan Bush. That's probably the only Bush is probably the only player you feel good about, you feel good about. JQ Hardaway. You know what what's he going to bring? Sammy Anderson. What's he going to bring? You don't know what any of these guys are going to bring. There's no comfort. There's so much unknown. The hope is that yes, they Justin Harris who studied under Kobe Bryant, the hope is that he learned enough that he's going to be, I'm not going to say Kobe Bryant 2.0, but essentially he's going to be, you know, he's going to be an adequate player. Because let me tell you, there are some teams in this conference that will bring speed, that will bring prolificness and explosiveness from the wide receiver position, most notably Houston, who you won't see until the conference championship game. But again, you're going to see UCF. And, they're, and they have produced some receivers over the years. Gabriel Davis, Marlon Williams. That's a team I'd be concerned about. There may be intriguing options. I mean, there is some good here. Because if the hope is that because they played under Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, the hope is that they can be really good and just step right in. I wouldn't expect it to be that way, though. Because there are a lot of intriguing options but there's so much unknown. You just don't know what's going to happen. That's why you should be concerned. You just don't know what's going to happen. Like I, like I mentioned, this is not a position where in years past, it's just next man up. No, it's not like that. Now, now it could be a situation, remember in 2018 leading into 2019, when you lost a lot of your defensive line, and that was the dominant group of that, year's, of that team. Sauce Gardner wasn't even here yet. Kobe Bryant was here. But you didn't know was going to step up on defense and it was just a, and it was a combination of players so maybe the combination of Bumpfus, Bush, Anderson, Hardaway, you know, Javon Hicks back there at safety, you know, whoever it is can step up. You know, one one thing that the Bearcats they were so good at once they were good at so good on both sides of the field last year. This year is going to be a little bit different. And it might, and it's going to be shocking when you see a receiver beat them deep. It's going to be shocking when you see someone go over the middle. You might see that in the Arkansas game. You might see that in the Indiana game. Because you're replacing two legends. And I've said this before. When you replace a guy, like, think about, you know, any great player that's come through this university first. Sean Kilpatrick, Gary Clark. Kenyon Martin, Danny Fortson, Oscar Robertson, Tony Pike, Desmond Ritter. You're going to, for, for the people talking behind me, you're going to see, you're going to, um, it's going to be difficult to replace those guys. Think about who you've seen get replaced in the NFL. Jim Kelly, Dan Marino, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be difficult to replace. I mean, the Steeler, I mean, the Steelers, and we'll get into this later this week. Could Desmond Ritter be that guy? Uh, that's a topic that's going to be really interesting. I mean, you think about Eli Manning. The Giants haven't replaced him. You think about a quarterback like, I mean, Tom Brady. Can Mac Jones be that guy? It's hard to replace a legend. The Bulls have not been the same since Michael Jordan left. The Lakers haven't been the same since Kobe retired. Think about how hard it is to replace a great player. Because they're one of one. Sauce Gardner is one of one, both literally and numerically. Kobe Bryant is one of one, for now at least, and probably for the next five to ten years. That's why it has that feeling of it's you're going from Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant to whom? At least with quarterback, you can say Desmond Ritter to Ben Bryant or Evan Prater, and that has some legitimacy to it. This cornerback group? doesn't but another position group on offense that does it does it should give you a feeling of comfort and it should give you a feeling of okay we're good 
and they play right behind the quarterback. I'll explain next. But first, I need to tell you about betonline.net because it is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Major League Baseball is underway, and the Reds, I'm going to say this. This past week might have been the worst week in the history of the Cincinnati Reds. Combine what ownership said, and then go 0-6. Lowest point in the history of the franchise. I'm I'm serious about that. I am. Uh, anyway, ba- NBA playoffs have been great so far. I recorded this episode during the third game yesterday between the uh, Bulls and the Bucks. But man, what a great game between Brooklyn and Boston. The Celtics winning the buzzer in game one. And then you got... Minnesota and Memphis, which might be the most exciting series with when you look at the star players, the young stars on both teams. I can see that series easily going seven games. You know, the NBA, it's nice to have an NBA playoffs where you don't know who's going to win. I mean, the, the, the Suns and the Heat are the number one seeds in their respective conferences. And I can't definitively say that either of those teams are going to make the finals, let alone win the NBA, let alone win the NBA finals. Anyway, so the running back room. Is another position that I think you should feel good about. Because this is like the defensive line three years ago. Where you're gonna re- you're gonna be replacing a great player in Jerome Ford, who, by the way, I think is gonna be really good in the NFL. You're replacing a guy in Jerome Ford, but you have options. It's not like you're gonna have to you're not gonna have to say to a guy, you're the lead back. No. And I think about Whoever does emerge as the lead running back who gets the most carries, which I don't think is going to be by a landslide like this past year was, I think whoever does win the, whoever it does get the starting job at running back, I mean, it could be Charles McClellan, who you know has experience, you know he's worked hard, you know he's very resilient. If he can get back to his form in 2018, this team can be really good offensively. You have a bunch of young stars, and then if they if those guys break out, they're going to be here for multiple years, you know, after this year. So you're already set in stone there. You can't go wrong with whatever happens at the running back position. Charles McClellan, Ryan Montgomery, Ethan Wright, Miles Montgomery. There's there's options galore out there. The running back position has quietly been a position of continuity since Luke Fickle got Luke Fickle got here. Yes, there's been turnover. Yes, Michael Warren has come and gone. Yes, Jared Dokes, you know, came and went. Jerome Ford was here for two years and didn't feel like for very long, but man, he was good when he was here. So my question is, you know, who are you going to rely on this year? I don't think it has to be one particular player. They can help Ben Bryan or Evan Prater. You feel good about whoever's going to emerge as the leader of that room. Is it McClellan? Is the young emerging star in Ryan Montgomery? We I saw Montgomery last year at USF was very good. I saw Ethan Wright against Temple when the Bearcats had already secured that win. Ran all over that defense. 58-yard touchdown run. I saw him do it again against UCF the next week. There is potential out the wazoos here with whomever you choose to start at this position. And like like I've said, if it's McClellan that breaks out, you're going to feel happy for him because of all the work he's put in, because of the resiliency he showed. <coughs> I mean, excuse me, you tear both ACLs and you haven't played a majority of your career. That's got to be hard. And then you think about a, a young star running back because you saw it last year with Montgomery and Wright. Miles Montgomery is going to be interesting too. You know, I think against Kennesaw State, my hope for that game would be you get – to see all four running backs get at least 10 carries. And hopefully they all get like, you know, 70 yards, seven yards a carry, or I should say 50. That's a little ambitious. But then again, this is a really good run. This is a really good running team. And another reason why you should feel good about running back is they're going to be running behind an offensive line. That's going to be very, very good. Again, don't worry about what you saw in spring in spring practice because the defensive line is very good too. This team 
And I'm going to talk myself into it throughout the summer and leading up to the season. This team can go 12-0 and because there are enough positions to feel good about on this team. Quarterback, running back, linebackers, defensive line, offensive line, tight ends. There, there are positions to feel good about on this team. Now, cornerback and kind of, you know, summarizing today's show, cornerback is an issue. Because you have to have good cornerbacks to win in college football. Look at all the cornerbacks that have come out of LSU, DBUs, Patrick Peterson, Derek Stingley. I mean, look at all the – recently, Derek Stingley. You feel like every single year there's a great corner that comes out of LSU or a defensive back that comes out of LSU, Tyron Matthew, Jamal Adams, whomever it is, Grant Delpit. And you look at this university, the players that they have produced – or are going to produce his NFL draft picks. Brian Cook, who sometimes I would forget about last year, but he was a, he was a really up and coming safety. I'm listening to um, the Bengals Booth podcast with Dan Horde, and he had on Marissa Contapelli, the Bengals team reporter, last Friday. And Brian Cook was in one of their mock drafts, and Dan said to Marissa that you know scouts would come into the Bearcats broadcast booth at home and road games, and they would ask Daniel who we should, who they should be keeping an eye on. And they said Brian Cook because he was a great up-and-coming player. He's a great person. I've seen him shoot up draft boards. I mean, I've seen a, Dane Brugler has the Bengals taking him. This is a defensive back room and cornerbacks that has produced, a, that's going to be producing a lot of draft picks this year and hopefully into the future. Because there are some great players in this room. You know, Perry Iliano did a fantastic job producing these corners. And before that, it was Mike Mickens. What a great time to be a Cincinnati fan. With nine teams, nine players in the NFL draft. If you're if you speaking to a Bearcats audience here, you now care about the NFL draft from a Bearcats perspective. Hey, you care about the NFL draft because you're a casual fan. You want to you just you want to watch it because it, it's one of the most watched off-season events, if not the most. Probably is the most. But now you're but now you care about it. this is how many players are going to get drafted. That's a good feeling to have. And it's also a good feeling to know that your quarterback and running back groups and rooms are good heading into this season. That's gonna do it for me here on Lockdown Bearcast today. We'll hit on the men's basketball transfer portal news tomorrow. Uh, the Bearcats did land a commit over the weekend, actually late last week after Friday's episode was recorded. So we will touch on that. Mock drafts we'll get to throughout this week. I believe John Garcia Jr. is going to be back on this week to discuss more on Bearcats recruiting. Great episode with him last week. If you didn't get if you didn't get a chance to see that, uh, make sure to check that out on our YouTube channel, Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel. And of course, you can go back and download it from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever. You get your podcast. Thanks for making. Thanks for making. Excuse me, Lockdown Bearcats. Your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Lockdown NFL Draft as Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget on YouTube to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and share a comment on today's video. And if you're downloading from audio, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast to like, share, comment, and give it a rating. All of this helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty with two N's, N-N-A-T-I. You can also follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, and email me at Alex3Frank at gmail.com. All lowercase, Alex, the number three, Frank at gmail.com. For Lockdown Bearcats, I'm Alex Frank. Thank you for, make, thank you for listening. And have a great rest of your Monday.